idea of zero and negative exponents. So, um, the yeah, word exponent um, is derived from Latin words meaning out of place. And when we look at an exponent, say we have two squared, it's kind of out of place. It's like a little guy right there and it's in the wrong spot. But, you know, we know what to do with this guy. Okay. So, all the exponents that are in this, like, positive numbers, positive integers, um, one and on, we kind of know what to do. But when we get to a zero here, or a negative number, or even moving forward into fractions in this spot, we'll have to um, learn a little bit more and add to our understanding. So, um, i got a little rule for you. It's for every... non-zero number A A to the zero is equal to one so that always holds true anything no matter what it is as long as it's not zero to this when you take it to the zero power we um, end up with one I got another one for you that for every non-zero number A and integer n, a to the n, a to the negative n, is equal to 1 over a to the n. Now, a little phrase that sometimes we like to use when we have negative exponents, it means move it and or lose it, or move it and lose it. And so when you have a negative exponent, you move it across the uh, fraction bar and you lose the negative. So let's um, take a look and see how that works in practice. So say I have something such as this. And they're asking us to simplify. This guy is going to simplify to 1 over 4 to the 3rd, because we're using this um, move it and lose it idea. And from there, we can just expand out this denominator into 1 over 64. Okay, so not too bad, right? So let's take a look at another one. Let's say that I've got something a little bit more complicated, and maybe it's like 4x squared y to the negative 3. Well, now I've got exponents on two of my uh, pieces of this term right here. There's nothing here, so my next line would just look like 4. And then I, the x squared is fine, because it's got a positive. And then this guy right here, i got to move it and lose it. I got y to the third underneath. Now, an expression or a term is considered simplified or in simplest terms when all the exponents are positive. So we don't want to leave any negative exponents in our final answers. Um, let's take it a little bit further and say, imagine a world where I had a problem that said this, evaluate. 8 3m squared t to the negative 2 and 4m is equal to 2 and t is equal to negative 3. Uh, we don't have a lot of space here so we better be uh, conservative with our paper. First step, I'm going to simplify the expression before I substitute. That would give me 3m squared over move it and lose it t squared. My next line would be let's substitute and I know that is 3 parentheses. Uh, m is 2 so I'm going to put that inside there. I'm going to close it up and I'm going to put my exponent on it. This is important because the exponents only operate directly with their touching so we want to specified it's only going to work on this guy and it starts to matter with our uh, order of operations also and then we're going to do parentheses t is negative 3 and we put the whole negative in there because this exponent is going to operate on the negative as well as the 3 they start together 
So now I'm going to do uh, order of operations. So I do my exponents. 3 times 4 over uh, negative 3 times negative 3, which is 9. And now I'm going to, I guess I'll do this 3 times 4, which is 12, over 9. And then I can simplify from there. Well, 3 goes into that one 4 times. 3 goes into that one 3 times. And final answer, 1 and 1 third to wrap that guy up. Nice. Okay, so I think you've got enough to... Um, work for today and good luck and I will see you next time.